The new iPad Air is a combination of two things. One, it has a price more in line with the lower end of the iPad world. And two, despite that, it also has a lot of the features of the higher end line with a processor. The processor inside of this thing is legit cutting edge. And today I'm here to tell you why you should buy one. So uh, why is that? Let's find out. I haven't slammed anything down for a while. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. On to the iPad Air and the continuation of the You Should Buy series. Couple, we always gotta start these You Should Buy videos off with a couple of quick notes. One, this video will not be an objective look into everything about the iPad Air, balancing both positives and negatives. Today. I'm gonna be biased as heck because iPads are amazing and I like extolling their virtue as much as possible. Wow, how often do you get to use the word extolling? If you do wanna see a more nuanced look at the iPad Air, I'll leave a link in the description to my iPad Air playlist that you can take a gander at after you finish watching this one. All right, enough of the preamble, let's get to the reason. The very first reason that you should buy an iPad Air is the power. Now, I don't normally say power. I normally don't start off with power because honestly, we've reached a pinnacle of power where if you buy an electronic tool from your preferred brand or ecosystem and that computer, tablet, phone, whatever, if that was made in the last few years, let's be honest, it has all of the power that you could ever want. There are a few exceptions, like if you have to, like if you're a gamer and you have to play the latest AAA game in the highest settings you can, Okay, then yes, you'll need to splurge on some cutting edge graphics cards and processors if those cutting edge things ever actually come in stock, cough, cough. But if you don't do that, or you don't have something like a big server farm for video editing, most devices released recently will have enough oomph to do anything that you need. The iPad Air though, and the iPhone 12 similarly, have the new A14 processor at the very heart. This processor, is for real. Sure, you won't see much of a difference in day-to-day -day operational use between an A12, A13, or A14 processor, but if you do things that require that kind of multi-threaded performance, like video editing and coding, this newest chipset is phenomenally good. I've shown it in previous videos that the iPad Air crushes video editing in ways that my much more expensive MacBook, my much more expensive, bigger, and obviously takes up my whole desk desktop PC, it's wild. Apple created these systems of chips or SOCs if you hear Apple talk about that and you wonder, Apple, what's an SOC? It's system of chips. They built those to basically handle anything that you might come across. When you start using this to play some of the games in the App Store, it's even gaming seems to be something that Apple is taking aim at. And while all that is great, if you're out there thinking to yourself, man, Gary, Gary, you keep talking about video editing and you talk about gaming and I don't do any of that, but you're still telling me that I should buy the iPad Air? Yes, other Gary. Good news, this power is still worth buying. You don't only buy the power for power's sake. When you are looking at a tablet, computer, whatever, whether it's an upgrade or your first time you buy that kind of device, something that you need to consider is how long do you actually plan to own that device? Longevity, is very important. Sure, if you're a tech nerd like somebody else that I know and you just buy the new thing every year, you don't care, so long as it basically functions a fractional better. So long as the ball's moving forward a little bit, okay, it's fine, but not, and this is something that I understand when I talk to my wife, not everybody is a huge tech nerd. What that A14 is really buying you is that longevity, and this shouldn't come as any surprise. I said the same thing about the A13 when the iPhone SE from 2020 came out. These new super-powered processors will absolutely continue to get updates from Apple for a very, very long time. The thing that I like to point to as the example of that, the iPhone 6S from the hinterland of like the ancient dinosaur times as far as technology goes, it's still got the newest version of iOS. The A14, long story long, the A14 will be relevant and get updates for years to come, unlike competitor products that you might at best get two years of updates. That's like a selling point on some of these devices. Like when I checked out the Microsoft Duo, one of the selling points was, hey, you get two years of updates. You don't have to worry about that here. The next reason you should buy the iPad Air, the brand new screen. Look, I love how all the brand new iPad Pro line looks. While the rest of Apple's line, MacBooks included, they can and do get a lot of flack for having older designs with big bezels and 
marginally functioning touch bars, the iPad Pro looks very sleek and very modern. And obviously back to the new iPad Air, it has a very similar aesthetic. The bezels here are a little, and I mean a millimeter wider. The display does have a slightly slower refresh rate. Honestly, you'll never be able to tell the difference unless you have the two devices right next to each other and you are staring, you are trying to see the difference. You're not going to. And Maybe when I say you, I mean me, because there could be something wrong with my eyes. Because while yes, I can see a difference when I compare the two next to each other, it's never as striking as the internet keyboard warriors tell me that it is. It's not that big of a deal. But besides the tech specs of the display, this is very bright, it's very vibrant, it's got a 10.9 inch retina panel that has P3 color accuracy and is fully laminated. This display is shockingly good. And while yes, we'll talk about this more in a second, it's really remarkable that they were able to give us 95% of the iPad Pro screen technology for $200 off. This screen, I love. I love this screen. It's bright enough and touch responsive enough that you will not have a single problem blending work and content consumption into this one device. Continuing on things that the iPad Air takes from the iPad Pro line, another big reason that you should buy this is it now has USB-C and this, look, all the rest of it is kind of like cosmetic nice to haves, but this might be the single most important reason that we talk about today, because from a usability standpoint, it's the biggest actual difference between the current iPad Air and the previous version. Heck, the USB-C is one of the big reasons the iPad Pro has been so far out in front of the standard iPad, because while yes, the design is a little more dated, it's the USB-C that opens up a world of possibilities. The first possibility is expanded charging options because USB-C allows for faster charging. Leading into the next possibility, way faster data transfers with either Apple branded adapters or a more general type of dongle. And yes, the iPad Air, now that it's stepped into like big kid territory, it can use legitimate dongles that open up basically a laptop's worth of IO to you for this small tablet. And okay, how are we gonna, this sort of bleeds into the next reason that you should buy it. So instead of having another one, so we'll keep on this train instead of starting a new one, but we'll just merge them. We'll combine them together into a super reason, accessories. USB-C takes advantage of the accessories and accessories, yes, the accessories you can use with the iPad Air are legit. I don't wanna say endless. I was gonna say endless because there's, uh, there's an end to everything, right? But now you can use top of the line external solid state drives, fast chargers, display adapters, so many things. You can take the iPad Air, you can take this little tablet and turn it into whatever you want. Do you want to set it up with an external monitor, keyboard and mouse? Boom, no problem, no problem at all. You need one cable for the external monitor and you can pair the keyboard and mouse. You could do it wired or you could do it Bluetooth because it has all that cool Bluetooth functionality. Or do you want to use this as basically a touchscreen laptop? Pop it onto the magic keyboard. Okay, Gary, let's have some, I'm going to restrain myself. I'm going to restrain myself and not give this a whole reason by itself, but you could put this on the magic keyboard and get one of the best typing experiences you'll find on the market. Oh, and you'll get an additional USB-C port for charging, a trackpad, and it's kind of like a screen protector. Okay. Okay, Gary, it, it's okay. It's just an accessory. No need to go down that rabbit hole today. But that leads me into another amazing thing and reason to buy the iPad Air. The smart connector on the back is the same one that's on the iPad Pro. So you can use things like the Magic Keyboard or other keyboard type cases or accessories that need the same kind of like transfer horsepower that this connector gives you. Also, you can use the second generation Apple Pencil with the iPad Air 4 if you happen to be a graphic designer or someone that really likes to draw stuff. I don't, so I don't even know where my pencil's at right now. I thought it was gonna be on that table. It's not on that table, so I just wanted to mention here because it is a pretty awesome addition, even if I don't always take advantage of it. The theme that I'm realizing as we're going through this video is I noticed that I keep saying that it's got basically the same thing as the iPad Pro, but for less money. Hark, it's got basically the same things as the iPad Pro, but for less money. Maybe. Maybe that's what we should title the video. Enough of that for right now, Gary. We'll talk more about that in a second. The next reason you should buy the iPad Air isn't exactly specific to the iPad Air, but I'm gonna say this anyway because the iPad Air still has it. The iPads, any of them, and I do mean any of them, they are some of the best productivity tools that you will ever, ever, 
ever find. It drives me crazy when people tell me they're not productivity tools because they absolutely are. I do basically all of my work on an iPad, either my 11 inch Pro, this iPad Air, and sometimes when I need to control my cameras externally, I'll use the eighth generation iPad. They can do basically everything a computer can do and they do it faster, quieter, cheaper, and smaller. Like that's the, I was gonna say that's the holy trifecta, but there's four of them. That's the holy cube in what you're looking for in productivity. Do you need to manage a calendar? Boom, done. Whether through a large number of calendar apps that you can get through the app store, or if you don't wanna spend money on it like I didn't, you can use the built-in Apple Calendar, which is remarkably good. Do you need to collaborate with an external team because we're now all working in our houses? Again, you can use any of the major apps like WebEx, Teams, etc. Or if your team uses Apple products, FaceTime is a surprisingly good virtual collaboration tool, which again, comes free. Plus, this has a better camera than the MacBook line, even those new ones that just came out. This has a 1080p camera as opposed to the 720p camera in the Max. I could go through every productivity task and show how the iPad can do it, but instead of doing that, just know that the iPad can do everything a team needs to do to work together. Plus, and this is rare for Apple, it does all of that with a touchscreen. And that might not be a big deal or all that striking if you are coming from Windows land. Here in Appleburg, we don't get a lot of touchscreens. Again, not even the new Macs have touchscreens. Having that makes moving calendar invites around, dragging and dropping files to share, or even video editing with the Apple Pencil just so much easier, so much easier. And what's funny, what's funny is when you get used to working on an iPad, I find myself trying to tap on the screen of my MacBook I, all the time, at least once or twice an hour when I'm working on it now. And I, I've now left smudges on my MacBook 16 screen from that. Truly, the iPad has spoiled me. And last, but definitely not the smallest of the reasons to buy the iPad is something that we've been alluding to this entire video, the price. We've gone on and on in this video and in several others talking about how great this tablet is, but something that you really have to understand is even with the power of the new processor, the versatility of the USB-C port, and the beauty of the display, the real amazing part about this is you get all of that for around $600. $600, and what's funny and kind of embarrassing, I typed that second $600 in slow, like I typed it slowly when I was typing the script, and then as I realized, I was embarrassed that I typed it so slowly, because you can't see how slow or fast I typed this out, but I wanted you to share, and we can all laugh at me together uh, for my silliness when typing. Seriously though, the price to performance here is off the charts. I cannot think of another device that gives you this level of functionality at this low of price. And that's not me being super Apple fanboy here, even though I do very much like Apple products and I personally use them. In my daily workflow, I have both Windows and Apple in my daily life. And even then, nothing else in the market, even my beloved iPad Pro, gets you this power at this price. The iPad Air, might be the best tech device released in 2020. And it won't be long before everybody else is saying the same thing. You can go up to a 256 gigabyte model for $749. And when I talk about devices like this for productivity, if you're trying to create on here, I always recommend buy as much memory as you can afford because you can't update it later. Now you can get an external solid state drive with way more storage for way less money. But if you do want to do video editing, I would say get the version with the bigger internal hard drive. 64 gigabytes will have you running into storage problems when you've got all of your raw files and all of your rendered videos on one device. That's maybe two or three projects for me, period. And no kidding, all of this stuff together makes the iPad Air phenomenal and you should absolutely buy one. And again, let's take a second to thank today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their own creative journey. The great news about Skillshare is that members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. With all of these new iPhones coming out, a class that I can't wait to take is the iPhone filmmaking guide from Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. These two, if you don't know their names, they are cornerstones in the mobile filmmaking community. And as I'm also trying to up my iPhone video game, this is the class that will do it. I'm already signed up, I can't wait to take it. The big news is though, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So click down below and start learning today. And thank you for watching.